President Trump has been taken to Walter Reed Medical Center less than one day after announcing he and the First Lady tested positive for COVID-19. The CDC says people who test positive are likely to have recently eaten in a restaurant. What the county says about that locally. Our heat wave is coming to an end. Get ready for milder temperatures, but you'll have to wait a little longer for those fall-like conditions. And Padre fans are rooting for the home team. We'll show you how they're celebrating the big game. And another shark sighting leads to warning signs on one local beach. A GoFundMe page up is to help a local chef fight cancer. Talk about a great pumpkin. These two might be the biggest in Southern California. How Jimbo's wants to help you through tough times with groceries for a year. News 8 starts right now. President Trump is at Walter Reed Medical Center tonight where he's expected to spend the next few days. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. This was the president's first public appearance since the news came last night that he and First Lady Melania Trump tested positive for COVID-19. The hospital stay is said to be precautionary. Shortly before leaving the White House, the president posted a video to Twitter thanking his supporters. The White House says the president has been, quote, fatigued and has been injected with an experimental antibody cocktail to fight the virus. Deborah Alfaron has more tonight from the White House. President Trump departed the White House Friday evening to go to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center after he and First Lady Melania Trump tested positive for COVID-19. Trump administration officials say he will spend several days there working and receiving treatment. The president's physician says he has been given a Regeneron antibody cocktail. I think I'm doing very well, but we're going to make sure that things work out. The First Lady is doing very well. The diagnosis came after one of the president's closest aides, Hope Hicks tested positive for the virus Wednesday. That's when she began exhibiting symptoms. The chief of staff confirmed the White House had been notified of Hicks' status before the president left her a fundraiser at his New Jersey golf club Thursday. White House operations made the assessment it was safe for the president in consultation with others. The president's diagnosis has sidelined him from the campaign trail with only about a month left until election day. Meanwhile, the White House says contact tracing efforts are underway for anyone who's coming close contact contact with White House staff. Vice President Mike Pence's office announced he has tested negative. 2020 Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden is campaigning in Michigan after he and his wife Jill announced negative test results Friday. Sending my prayers for the health and safety of the First Lady and President, uh, the President of the United States. This is not a matter of politics. It's a bracing reminder to all of us that we have to take this virus seriously. Two Biden campaign officials confirmed to CBS News they are in the process of pulling down negative ads aimed at President Trump for an undetermined amount of time. Deborah Alfaron, the White House. The White House physician says the rest of the first family, including the president's 14-year-old son, Barron, have all tested negative. Former President Barack Obama extended his best wishes to President Trump and the first lady during a virtual fundraiser this evening. With President Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis, many are wondering how this is going to impact his campaign. The election is just over a month away. News 8's Shannon Handen, Handy spoke with News 8 political analyst Laura Fink and has more on what voters can expect. Experts say things will look much different moving forward. Voters can expect an even bigger push on social media from the Trump campaign. As for any rallies he had planned, those will likely change as well. President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have both tested positive for COVID-19. The president's diagnosis has lots of people talking and asking questions. His work got out Thursday. President Trump and the First Lady both tested positive for COVID-19. News stations and social media feeds everywhere were inundated with commentary, opinions and questions. Among them, how will this diagnosis impact his campaign? So much depends on President Trump and how he fares as he uh, weathers this coronavirus. News 8 political analyst Laura Fink says there's no question his staffers are scrambling. The Trump campaign team right now is reworking its strategy. For starters, social media will play an even bigger role. President Trump is known for his love of Twitter. That will evolve into more visual mediums if he's physically able. I think you'll absolutely see him on 
video because we know President Trump is a relentless campaigner and he loves the campaign trail. As for any upcoming rallies, those may change as well. In the past, thousands of his supporters have gathered, many without masks or social distancing. Fink says future events might be canceled or changed to include different speakers and fewer people in attendance. This may change the perception of people that may have approved of that that type of event in the past, but now we're reconsidering. What about the upcoming debate scheduled for October 15th, just 13 days from now? We might see that second debate canceled. We might see it postponed. But before any major decisions are made, Fink says the focus should be on testing Trump's inner circle and tracing who they've had contact with. This map shows the president's travels just within the past few days. Finally, what happens if the president's condition becomes worse? If the president becomes ill, he can, through the Constitution, pass power temporarily over to Vice President Pence, who would take over the duties of president. We'll probably be getting constant updates from the White House on President Trump and Melania Trump's conditions. We will continue to share that information right here on News 8. Today was another scorcher. I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis. It was hot out there. We're taking this heat into the start of the weekend, but we do have some relief on that eight day forecast. Take a look at how we shaped up for today. We had a lot of triple digit temperatures for the inland valleys. 105 in Escondido today, 103 Valley Center, even along the coast, still feeling the heat, even though temperatures weren't as hot as they were yesterday. We were at 91 degrees for downtown today. The same for Carlsbad Oceanside at 94, and that's for the airport. If you take into consideration consideration the harbor 85 degrees tied the record on this day for Oceanside and that was set in 1965 also broke records today for Vista Escondido and that high of 102 in Ramona broke the record on this day by two degrees that was set back in 2012 taking a look at that warning that's still in play it's going to expire tonight so the excessive heat looks to exit by the weekend but we are still talking about some hot temperatures so high pressure will start to weaken over the next couple of days it will be a gradual cool down still warmer than usual by tomorrow and we're going to take that into Sunday but then by next week well around this time next week we'll be talking about more seasonal temperatures low 80s for the inland valleys low to mid 70s for the coast it'd be a nice change of pace we'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up back to Barbara Lee and Carlo Thanks, Carlene. Right now, the Padres are fighting to stay in the postseason after a wild card game last night took a wild turn. Padres came out on top after two homers from both Fernando Tatis and Will Myers and a solo shot from Manny Machado. News 8's Heather Hope is at Petco Park tonight with more on all the excitement. Yes, and although it's a slight bummer that fans can't get inside Petco Park to watch the game up close, car after car lined up to be directly across the street in a tailgate lot to root, root, root for the home team. Go, outside Petco Park watching the Padres take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, we're all thinking they're going to win, right? Yeah. yeah. Win. The Long family dressed the part. Oh, yeah, I got my Slam Diego shirt. Went to one of the pop-up stores. Fans gathered from inside their cars to catch game three. With everything that's going on, it was pretty cool for them to do this whole drive in, drive through, or drive in. Driving up to get a Padres packed goodie bag. And then also grabbing bags of popcorn and much needed bottles of water for the over 90 degree day. In the Lexus lot, set up where SUV after SUV rolled up after paying $175 for a parking space to watch the game. <laughs> It came on my email. I looked at my son. I said, we're going. What game? Game three. That's the best one right there. It, there's, there's no price to put on this. It's like MasterCard. It's priceless. Local small businesses say the Padres are a much needed boost. Uh, we're going to take it. We're going to take it and go and play with the Dodgers. El Puerto Seafood is decked out with Padres balloons, TV screens, and tables indoors and outside for their tasty taco specials. Hey, it's a shame that, that one of our best seasons, it's a season that the fans can't get in there, but we are truly blessed to have one of the best uh, cities to play baseball in. So will the Padres pull through? I'm nervous. <laughs> I've been nervous. Like I woke up and my butterflies was like, uh, so I don't know. Fans are still stoked that last Last night's game, Padres players Fernando Tatis Jr. and Will Myers joined Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in becoming the second pair of teammates in MLB history with multiple home runs in the same game. Ooh, that was amazing. That was really mind blowing for me. That was San Diegans cheering hard from the car. Go Padres! We're going to the World Series! Woohoo! Heather Hope, News 8.
And of course, the Padres need a win tonight to advance to the National League Divisional Series. John Howard is going to have much more coming up in sports. Lifeguards in La Jolla are warning people to be on alert after shark sightings this morning, or at least they were. The first report came around 1030 this morning when a surfer says she saw a six foot shark between La Jolla Shores and Scripps Pier. She says it did not appear to be aggressive. There was a second report shortly after that of a similar sighting. Lifeguards removed signage just a couple of hours ago after receiving no additional reports of shark sightings today. San Diego County is reporting new coronavirus data today from more than 9,000 tests. 302 new cases were reported for a positive rate of 3%. The 14-day positive average is at 3.0%. Three of today's cases come from San Diego State University. Two community outbreaks were also reported, with 28 reported from the last week. Two new deaths were also reported today, bringing that total to 794. And another reminder to stay vigilant and keep your guard up when going out. The CDC says people who test positive for COVID-19 are twice as likely to say that they've eaten in restaurants. News 8's Brandon Lewis has more on what experts say could be done to limit exposure. Uh, restaurants are actually one of the top sources of community outbreaks in San Diego County, but local health officials stress that doesn't necessarily mean that people are getting the virus there. Instead, they believe it's behavior that's driving the results of this study. The Centers for Disease Control found people who test positive for COVID-19 are twice as likely to have dined in a restaurant than those who didn't. It focuses on two main areas, that diners can't eat with their masks on and limited airflow indoors. Researchers in a separate study found an infected person could spread the virus to up to nine others in a confined space. But simply opening a window and changing airflow limited exposure to just two people. I think we're all going to be considering our air systems and buildings much more seriously moving forward. What we were seeing is that with increased outside air exchange through the open window, particles deposit more quickly and then also be ex exhausted uh, from the airstream more quickly. Locally, restaurants and restaurant bars are among top sources of outbreaks. However, San Diego health officials say they're not seeing a similar trend here. I think it's important to remember that um, correlation is not causation. Meaning people who dine out may also go other places, increasing potential exposure. Plus, an outbreak doesn't necessarily mean a person contracted the virus there. Only that three or more people who tested positive recently visited. We have not done that kind of study here in San Diego, uh, but it stands to reason that there may be uh, people who are uh, interacting um, more socially, and it's important that they follow the guidance that our public health officer has given. The CDC study did not distinguish between indoor or outdoor dining, which could make a difference. San Diego County recently updated its guidance for dine-in eating that requires all customers to wear a face covering any time that they are at their table unless they're consuming food. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Brandon. Still ahead, unsolicited EDD letters are showing up in mailboxes across the state. Coming up tonight, the Good Samaritan who did the right thing when he received benefits that were not his. And audio recordings have been released from the Breonna Taylor grand jury investigation.